Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Conversations with the Soul. I'm Rita Hickman. I'm a Shiatsu massage therapist. I'm a body mind expert, and I'm a master intuitive healer um, out in northern Illinois. And as you can see, it's still snowy and cold here, but I'm hoping for a warm up this week. So, anyways, um, we've been talking about intuition and relationships all week. And uh, so I'm super excited about today's topic. And uh, today's topic is intuition. What if everything they told you were lies? Good morning, Snow. Nice to see you. So I'm going to start with a story from a friend of mine. I used to go up to um, the UP. And in the UP, in the, good morning, Jeannie, in the UP, uh, Michigan, Kathy, nice to see you. There was a 350-pound Ojibwe man named Bruce Hardwick. Hi, Sherry. Great to see you. Now, the neat thing about Bruce Hardwick was that um, he was definitely a rebel. He was absolutely avant-garde. I'm not sure if he completed uh, high school or not, uh, but the interesting thing was is he was world-renowned as an international um, firekeeper, an international healer, but he was the most raunchy, um, inappropriate human being I've <laughs> pretty much ever met in my life. And the beautiful thing about him is he always got you thinking outside of your box every single time. He would take words uh, like compassion, you know, and, and relate them to some weird sexual topic. Get it? Compassion. You know, he would, he would create new languages. He would read books and get an entirely different interpretation out of them as everybody else did. And it was just wonderful. And one of the things he would say, and it was one, of, it was a, a step that started to take me on my path to um, to looking at my intuition and, and really moving in that direction. Good morning, Eileen. Great to see you. Good morning, Rosa. Nice to see you too. So he would always say, "What if everything they ever told you were lies?" You know. And it really gets you thinking. So in our intuition uh, is based upon our life experiences, our memories, our ideas, our beliefs, things which were imprinted on us, things which were handed down from generation to generation. And when I was young, I didn't trust my intuition at all because it led me into all of these really awful lessons and situations. And uh, the people that I liked turned out not being nice to me. The people that um, I didn't like turned out being pretty great human beings. And so I didn't trust my reactions to things. I didn't trust how my body felt when I felt scared or anxious or worried because all my wires were crossed. Uh, hi, Scott, Dan, nice to see you. So all of my wires were crossed and so I didn't, you know, I sat there lost without any guidance, without any navigation. And so as a seeker, you know, I was always uh, trying to look for people and uh, that could help give me some insight and enlightenment. So Bruce was one of those people that, you know, you imagine the guru in India living in a, in a cave where, you know, someone comes to study with him and he, and he gives them the scariest, most awful task in the world. And everybody's like, wait, you're supposed to be a nice guy. You're supposed to, you know, be peace and light and love. And uh, you're actually kind of a jerk. <laughs> you know, good morning, Rochelle. Bruce was kind of like this. He had this heart, which was huge, but uh, he didn't he didn't fail to to surprise you and make you laugh and think, "Wow, that's really stretching. That's that's really reaching for something." And so, yeah, he would say, "What if everything they told you were lies?" And that started to get me questioning. Because if everything that people had told me were lies that I'd been raised with, if, uh, how could that be true? And how it could be true is because what I was taught, good morning, Lisa, nice to see you. What I was taught was only one small part of what reality was, only one little piece. And so I was reacting to that. And I was confused because of that. It's like, um, you know, it reminds me of, do you remember the 19, I think it was 90s? where they did this study with uh, standardized testing with uh, inner city kids about, uh, and one of the questions was circle the fish. And uh, one of them was a, a rectangle. 
you know, they had a fish, they had a chicken, one was a rectangle and, and something else. And all of these kids from inner city, when they were told to, to circle the fish, circled the rectangle. And the reason they circled the rectangle, because to them, that's what it was. That's what truth was. It's because when they would go to McDonald's or some other fast food place, that's what fish would look like. It would look like a rectangle. So what if everything that we know to be true um, is really just a small, limited piece? Were those inner city kids wrong? No, that was fish. Absolutely, that was true. Good morning, Shana. Great to see you. That was true, but so was another fish. And so these kids would end up failing and confused because their intuition in these situations kept leading them wrong. And so if you come from a background where there was trauma or divorce or pain or emotional abuse or, or psychological abuse or, or you saw these things happen, or maybe you were uh, really sheltered or pampered or protected from everything, um, you will create a, a paradigm of the world and your intuition will be based on that. Your intuition will be, be based on that felt sense will be based on what you know. So the best spellers in the world are ones that have a felt sense about whether a word is spelled correctly or not. And the reason they have a felt sense about that is usually because they read a lot. They were big readers. Me, I was, uh, I was the child of, of a librarian and a teacher uh, with teachers going back in, in my family. So for me, I read all the time. And I was lonely and sad and, you know, blah, 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 and all these issues. And so, um, you know, I dove into books. And that made me a fabulous speller because I had this great felt sense about how something could be, you know, how something should be spelled and how it shouldn't. Well, that's true about our intuition as well. You know, if we don't have the widest variety of experiences we can have, if we don't try out new things and look at life from different perspectives, good morning, Miriam, then we're working off of a very limited intuition. Um, yes, when we use our intuition, it's accessing a part of us, which is part of a community consciousness. It's accessing uh, information that isn't available to our conscious mind. Absolutely, positively guaranteed. But still remember that it has to come through our filter. It has to come through our interpretation. When uh, Many times when people read tarot cards, they have a hard time reading for themselves, mainly because they're too close to the situation. And there's a lot of people who are in the psychic professions, which um, for some things they have fabulous psychic abilities and others it's really limited it's because the amount of experiences that you've been open to and had and not just you know um, being a good girl or a good person experiences experiences of you were the bully on the playground you were the one that um that snapped at somebody else are you finding as you getting that as you're getting older that you're struggling because you're picking up qualities good morning lauren you're picking up qualities and showing qualities that um, you had a real problem with in the past. You know, you thought in your life when you were younger, I will never do that. I will never be that person ever, ever, ever. And then now you're finding yourself doing it. Is that happening to you? That's because you were out of balance and your intuition needed to evolve a little bit more. You needed more experiences in life. You know, when we walk in with a really strong felt sense if we haven't seen and been and lived all the other sides of that, then our felt sense, our intuition is going to lead us wrong, you know? So, yes, our subconscious and our unconscious and our heart and our gut, they pick up information that, that we can't possibly, our conscious mind can't possibly hold. And then it filters it to our conscious mind, you know? But if... If we're having a reaction on some level because we still have this strong judgmentalism because we don't know what it's like, then um, then our intuition is going to be off. It's uh, We'll feel something, we'll sense something, but we will have no idea what it means. You know, it's back to that, that study with the kids. You know, if you've never seen a fish, then to you, intuitively, a fish is that rectangle that you would get from, you know, McDonald's or Burger King or whatever. That's what a fish is. So think about it in your world today. 
when you're looking out through your day and around your day, I want you to take a look at what you might not know. And how do you know you have a conflict? Because you have a strong felt sense come up that gives you a sense of fear or anxiety or anger or frustration or blame. And what tends to happen when we go into that fight or flight, because fight or flight isn't just being scared, it's also being angry, right? Because hence the, the fight. <laughs> When we're in that fight or flight place, we are um, not tapped into our intuition. We are tapped into um, the loudest voice in our subconscious, which is the one that wants to keep us safe. It's only when we relax and when we've got a wide variety of experiences, when we know what it's like to be every single facet of that diamond, only when we have that does our intuition get better. So walk into today questioning, questioning everything, especially if somebody triggers you. If you get triggered, if you go into fight or flight, and trust me, I have spent decades dealing with fight or flight. Uh, I had tens of thousands of triggers. You know, if somebody blinked wrong, I was, I was in that place. You know, if somebody breathed differently, if uh, something just seemed off, I was immediately into fight or flight. So what I want you to do is even with the small things, if you go into fight or flight, find a way to relax, you know, go for a walk, take a Xanax, drink some water, um, breathe, hold your breath, uh, read a book, listen to music, do whatever you need to do to get out of the fight or flight. And sometimes it takes something like chamomile tea. Sometimes it takes uh, something like an anti-anxiety in, in, in order to get you out of that space. But then I want you to be curious. I want you to think to yourself, what is the lie? What's, what's the lie? Is the lie that when someone gets mad, it means that um, I'm in great danger? Not necessarily. My body may react that way, but uh, that's not necessarily true. So if you react with an emotional response and you go into your conscious mind and you're kind of stuck swirling around over and over, just remember, you're not in your rational mind. You're not uh, tapped into your intuition. You're reacting. But if you get yourself to the other side, I want you to sit there with it and question. Question what is really true. And then also question what do you want to be true? Because when you start looking at um, cultural medicines, when you start looking at, at you know whether you're supposed to walk clockwise around a sacred fire. Hi, Kate, nice to see you whether you're supposed to walk clockwise around a sacred fire or counterclockwise around a sacred fire, or whether it's the white buffalo calf woman or whether it's the star people. You know, when you start looking at that, and then when you start diving into quantum physics, where, you know, DNA separated even by 50 miles reacts at the same time, you know, when you start diving into that, you realize truth is very, very wiggly. It's very complex. There's so many millions of ways. Hi, Robin, nice to see you. There's so many millions of ways of looking at things, you know, and so start to cultivate that attitude of curiosity. What is that other point of view? What if we're both true? What if it's both right? How could that be true? How can you expand your perception and your paradigm so that you can see things from as many different points of view as possible? When you can, good morning, Bijal, when you can do that, when you can see the world in a million different perspectives, now you get into your body and your intuition will be a lot more accurate. So sometimes if it feels right, be the bully. If it feels right, be the mean person. If it feels right, be the hippy dippy love child. Play with all of these different aspects and points of view which you have. Play with all these different personalities, uh, almost like you're an actor or an actress. That's where I got some of my stuff. I started into acting when I was a kid, and, and I got to realize you could be anybody. And by doing that, by being anybody and everybody, by finding out who they were, my intuition got better and better and better. Because now when I reacted to something, I could see it from a different point of view. It got me out of my, my obsession, out of fight or flight. And then I could feel from my intuitive sense in my body mind what was true and what wasn't true. You know? So there's a couple steps to getting your intuition better. And one of them is realizing what if everybody, everything they ever told you was a lie? It's a great way to start. 
So think about it today. Think about how your intuition can be like three times better when you start opening up your mind to the fact that you might not be right. The fact that what you know might not be all there is. And that maybe they fed you, just like all the politicians do, <laughs> maybe they fed you a pack of lies and you on some level believed them, okay? Because when you start doing this, when you start questioning uh, and keeping that open mind and heart, your intuition just gets better and better and better, which then makes you feel more confident, safe, and your life starts to get much more successful. You start to achieve the things you've always wanted. It's a great vision of where you're going. So stick with us through these videos. Stick with us on this metaphysical path and with this tribe. And uh, I'm so looking forward to tomorrow because tomorrow we're going to be talking about experiences. We're going to be talking about um, how do you play with uh, learning? How do you play with making your intuition better and better? How do you play with life? Let's, let's make it a game. So have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.